Coach Amanda Pluger for Celtics Talk. Um, what can you say just about Jason Tatum and the maturity and poise that we saw from him in his first NBA playoff game? Well, I can say we expect it because he's shown it all year. So, you know, it's one of those things. Those guys lived a lot of what the playoffs are about today. So the good news is, is they've got now a little bit of experience and know how hard it is, um, know how detailed you have to be to finish a team out, which we weren't. Um, you know, obviously at the end of regulation, and um, you know, hopefully we're better in that situation as the series goes on. But um, it's hard; it's hard to win, and that's what you learn in these, in these games. Brian Rob, Boston Sports Journal. Brad, uh, on your left there, uh, Al Horford. Just the the effort he gave you on both ends of the floor, and just the amount of onus he had on him, you know, on both ends to deal with the onus. Yeah, I mean, we wanted to go, we wanted to post him, we wanted to make him play in the post, and um, you know, make Giannis defend down there, and and um, I thought Al did a good job, you know. Um, he earned all 14 free throw attempts. I know that because he was, um, you know, he was really, really working to get to the line and really working to get position early, and. Um, you know, I thought Al battled. I thought everybody on both sides looked a little gassed at the end of overtime. I'm not sure anybody was more tired than Al um, because he put in an, an incredible effort for us. Mark Murphy, Boston Red Lake. Brad, you guys survived a pretty rough stretch in the second quarter, including turnovers at halftime. Was that your message? Was it turnovers, ball security? Well, that was part of our plan to kind of lull them into a false sense of security. <laughs> Never attack the paint. Just throw it to the other team and let them score whenever they want. We thought maybe that would wear them out. Um, turns out it didn't look like a good plan. So we had to readjust, make those hard halftime adjustments, throw it to our team, and um, try to do what we did in the first quarter. You know, there wasn't much adjustments. It was just like, we got to do this, this, and this better. Um, they turned it up on us in the second quarter. And, you know, we were playing well up to that point, but not well enough. Brad, uh, Mike Petralia, CLNS Media. Uh, mental reset going into overtime. I'm wondering, from your perspective, is there something you tell your team, or you know, after two mo incredibly emotional swings at the end of regulation, how do you get your team mentally set to take on overtime? Well, I think you can tell a lot from the fight on the tip, and you know, we got the tip after two tips and running through the ball to get a loose ball and. That's when I knew we were reset. So, you know, you just get back out and play. You're ready to play. And, um, you know, I thought our guys, you know, I knew they wouldn't hang their head about it. They're, sometimes I think they're at their best when those things happen. You know, I think that's just a really um, resilient group of kids. And not kids, men. Yeah. Coach, Coach Bob Schron, the citizen, uh, what did happen on the uh, last play in regulation? What was. Well, obviously Middleton made a 30-footer, and you don't want to foul in that situation. But you know, I think we could have done better. Did you? Did you want to? Did you? Did you struck me to foul? On <coughs> no, 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 too much. Too much variable. If he catches it and he's into a shooting range motion, you're you're done. He still has to make the shot. It's a hard shot over a guy. I just think you know the shot before that we gave up to Brogdon. We should you know we we could have done better. That one we could have done better. We'll watch it tomorrow and improve from it. Coach Mark D'Amico, Celtics.com. 66 points combined from Chris Middleton and Giannis. Uh, what was your guys' game plan and emphasis about taking away the other guys that are around them throughout the game? And you just try to take away their strengths. I mean, those guys are going to score some when they play that many minutes. I mean, what Middleton was 47, Giannis was 45. Um, I thought we did an incredible job on Giannis. You know, and so he, he had 35 points, but, you know, I thought our, our bigs kept him in front made it as tough as possible. He had multiple possessions where he had to stop, pivot, pump fake, and all that stuff, and, and still find a way to get you know, the ball up on the glass. And I thought our guys were tremendous um, at that. And it's really hard to guard, and he's going he's gonna to score points sometimes. Um, and then Middleton is just a, he's a really, really smooth shooting guy. Like He can play off of that post up against smaller guys and shoot it right over him. He can play off of handbacks and pick and rolls, and he's just got a lot of game. You know, he averages 20 a game. People don't talk about him enough, probably. When there's so much attention on those two guys, and how, how do you guys deal with the rest of them that are around them when there's so much attention? Well, I mean, you still you just prepare for each guy, Middleton, 
Giannis and everybody else for what they do best. Brad, Gary Ross from Boston Globe. Going back to Middleton, how do you kind of come back him shooting over your guards? I mean, he was, he was shooting, he can shoot over Shane, obviously, but any of the smaller guys, he, he seems to shoot with ease. How do you kind of make that adjustment yep. game too? We have to pick your poison. How many of those did he hit? One, two? Like, I think that ultimately he may hit some, kind of like we did, you know, when we switched some with Jimmy Butler last year. Like, he may hit a couple of those. If they're long twos and they're contested, we might have to live with that, or we might have to adjust if he really gets going. That's probably going to be a game-to-game, day-to-day decision. But I think sometimes, and I found myself as a coach overreacting to a made <coughs> shot against a perceived mismatch when – Sometimes it's not a terrible shot in the big picture of things. And so I think that we just have to weigh both. Sometimes you have to tip your cap, great shot. We kept our defense set, we got it blocked out, we had a chance to rebound if he misses, but he made it. That's what good players do sometimes. Jared Lacey Athletic, uh, for most of the game, they were playing with another big with Giannis out there, and you guys were able to kind of trap him when he attacked the lane and force him to put the ball, uh, pick the ball up. But when they went small in the fourth quarter, what was the adjustment like having to deal with their kind of newfound spacing there? Well, that's the, that's the, you know, with the exception of Parker, that's the closing lineup that you anticipate, right? And I think that um, super small um, with Giannis at the five, we knew that was coming. Um, but they did a good job of spreading us out. You know, Bledsoe got the drives right in front of our bench. Giannis then had the opportunity to drive as they had actions going on on both sides. It's hard because Brogdon and Middleton are on one side doing something. Snell and Bledsoe are on the other. And oh, by the way, one of the best ISO players in the in the world is going one-on-one in the middle. Like, how much do you help? How much do you stay? It's tough. But, you know, that's, that's what we've got to figure out. Two questions. Brad, Chris Gasper, Boston Globe. You look at this game, you know, Jason Tatum started four for four and then missed his next seven shots. Uh, Terry was one of six from three through three quarters. He's hitting some of the biggest shots of the game. Is that just sort of the nature of relying on young players in the playoffs that you'll see inconsistency even within the same game in their performance? Yeah, I mean, and, and Chris, I don't ever care about the shots. Like, the shots will go if they go, as long as we're taking good ones. But as long as we're not making mental errors on offense and defense, if we're executing and trying our best to get to the right shot, I mean, even the best players, as you watch the playoffs throughout this, they'll go through their ups and downs, their lulls in the game. Um, they both have the one thing I will say about that that though is that they both have the ability to bounce back from those stretches, which sometimes young players don't have that ability. Brad, uh, Steve, I'll talk Boston Herald. You mentioned about Al being trying to post him up, but he also had some plays in the perimeter, the three point shot, the, the missed three that gets the rebound and sets up a hoop. Can you just expand on, on the, the many different things that you needed from him tonight? Both yeah, I mean, Al's going to – we're going to ride Al. I mean, it's just, you know, um, he's been unbelievable in being a facilitator for us all year. He, he has his moments because of the way that we're being defended where he gets to be, you know, more of a featured scorer. With where we are now, he's going to be more of a featured scorer and facilitate and guard Giannis and, you know, do everything. I'll probably run our film session tomorrow. So that's it's his job. Thanks. Thanks, bro. Thanks, bro.